In 1867, Kansas State University held its first commencement. Three women and two men graduated that year. As the first land-grant university in the nation, this fledgling university had a vision of providing innovative education to all people. That early vision has continued through to the present. With over 250 majors and a diverse student body, including students from all 50 states and more than 100 countries. Becoming one of the nation's top 50 public research universities by 2025 is today's vision for tomorrow. With academic programs among the best in the nation and professors who are leaders in their fields, Kansas State University is an international leader in teaching, learning, service, and research. Today's graduates join over 200,000 alumni who are proud to call K-State their alma mater. Congratulations and thank you to all those who have supported them through their undergraduate experience at Kansas State University.
Welcome to the Fall 2017 Commencement Exercises of the College of Business Administration. I am Kevin Gwinner, Dean of the College. I am pleased to introduce our two vocalists who will be singing the National Anthem. Ms. Jessica Schreiner, a graduating senior in marketing from Topeka, Kansas, and Ms. Megan Zeman, senior in elementary education from Manhattan, Kansas. Please remain standing. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you, Jessica and Megan, that was amazing. Would everyone please be seated? Before we proceed with our program, I would like to introduce the members of the platform party. Please hold your applause until the entire platform party has been introduced. Beginning at my far left, we have Dr. Brett Wilkinson, head, Department of Accounting. Mr. Sir, uh, Dr. Ansley Shaw, Head, Department of Finance. Dr. Eric Higgins, Associate Dean for Finance and Human Resources. Dr. Stacy Kovar, Associate Dean for Academic Administration. Ms. Benta Janda, Assistant Dean for Student Services. Mr. Mike Upchurch, Executive Vice President and C Chief Financial Officer, Kansas City Southern, a member of the class of 1983 and today's commencement speaker. Dr. April Mason, Provost and Senior Vice President of Kansas State University. General Richard Myers, President of Kansas State University. Dr. Schwen Shu, Associate Dean for Academic Programs. Mr. Cooper Clausen, College of Business Outstanding Graduating Senior. Mr. Patrick Kennedy, College of Business Student Speaker. Mr. David Lehman, Instructor, Department of Marketing. Dr. Esther Swilly, Head, Department of Marketing. Dr. Bill Turnley, Head, Department of Management. And Ms. Amy Button Rents, President and CEO, Kansas State University Alumni Association. Let me also take this opportunity to express our appreciation to our outstanding marshals, Dr. Danita Whitney Bramerlin and Dr. Janice Crow, if you would stand. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Well, I'm delighted that you are here to join us in this special event in the lives of our graduates, an event that marks the culmination of many years of hard work and sacrifice in the pursuit of knowledge, a meaningful career, and a promising future. Graduates, today is a wonderful day of celebration for you and your families. I'm privileged to have the opportunity to share this very special occasion with you. No one is happier or prouder of your educational accomplishments than those loved ones gathered here today. And I would like to take a moment to 
acknowledge the encouragement and support your families have provided for your success. With the parents, spouses, and children of our graduates, please stand and be recognized. Although we are here today to honor the accomplishments of the graduates, we would be remiss if we did not also recognize the faculty and staff who have worked diligently with our graduates in completing their studies. In honor of the faculty and professional staff who have served you with such dedication, I ask you, our graduates, to please stand and applaud their contributions to your success. Thank you. Please be seated. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to recognize the recipients of three prestigious college awards. Dr. Roger McKinney, Professor of Management Information Systems, is the Fall 2017 College of Business Outstanding Contribution and Research Award recipient. Dr. Doug Walker, Associate Professor of Marketing, is the recipient of the KS State Bank Teaching Excellence Award for 2017. And Ms. Emily Brzezicki, Program Director for Career Development, is the recipient of the College of Business Professional Staff Excellence Award. Congratulations to you all. We are honored to have Kansas State University President Richard Myers and Provost and Senior Vice President April Mason join us today to congratulate our graduates. Thank you for being here, President Myers and Provost Mason. At this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Mike Upchurch. Mike Upchurch is Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of Kansas City Southern, a $2.6 billion international transportation company. He has held this position since October 2008. He previously held the position of Senior Vice President of Financial Management and Purchasing at KCS. Prior to his tenure at Kansas City Southern, Mr. Upchurch held various positions at Sprint's Nextel, most recently as Senior Vice President Financial Operations. During his nearly 18 years of service at Sprint, Mr. Upchurch held various other positions within the organization, including Director of Audit Operations, Assistant Treasurer, Director of Finance Reengineering, Vice President of Finance for Long Distance Business and Consumer Services, and Senior Vice President of Finance for Sprint Business Solutions. Mr. Upchurch began his career as an accountant with Price Waterhouse. He is a 1983 graduate of, the Kansas, State of Kansas State University and holds a bachelor's degree uh, in accounting uh, from the College of Business. He has served as a board member for the Heart of America Council of the Boy Scouts of America and on the board of the Multiple Sclerosis Society Mid America Chapter. In June of 2011, he was recognized by the Kansas City Business Journal as CFO of the Year and has received recognition several times by Institutional Investor Magazine as a top CFO in the transportation industry. Mike is an avid K-State sports fan. You'll often see him here at basketball games and at our football uh, stadium. Would you please join me in welcoming Mr. Mike Upchurch to the podium. Wow, I'm looking at 200 of the finest graduates in the entire country. I'm truly excited and honored to be on this stage with K-State President and four-star general Richard Myers, Provost Mason, Dean Gwinner, and other dignitaries. I'm truly humbled by this experience, but I'm sure many of you are wondering why did you end up with a CFO of a railroad company when you could have had people like Bill Snyder, Tyler Lockett, Eric Stone Street, perhaps even Congresswoman Lynn Jenkins. Parents, 
I was in your position in May, watching my son Brandon cross the stage in Boulder, Colorado, just hoping he had paid his campus parking tickets so that he could actually get his diploma. And two years ago, my daughter Alexandra got a chuckle watching her K-State dad do the Woo Pig Suey fight chant as she graduated from the University of Arkansas. And just for the record, I much prefer the Wabash Cannonball. Now you might not remember this commencement speech 30 years from now, or even tomorrow, but I do hope you remember the gift I'm going to give you today. Yes, I said gift. I see that some of you are now listening a bit more intently. So in addition to providing you a little bit of advice today, I'm going to give each one of you a one-year membership in the KSU Alumni Association. But since you're graduating with business degrees, you surely know that every gift has strings attached. My only expectation is that you actually use this gift to stay involved with K-State. Don't just carry the card in your wallet. Put it to good use to come back to university functions, alumni functions, and CBA functions. And please use the discount at the K-State Union to buy something purple and cover your town in royal purple. Why am I doing this? Well, it isn't because I was a B student or a speaker who was asked not to return to his dorm after his freshman year. Both true. It's because I think the most important thing you can do for K-State is to give back, to reinvest in this great institution because it is this community that you learned about leadership, commitment, and the responsibility to give back. I'm sure many of you have read Bill Snyder's They Said It Couldn't Be Done. I think it's still required reading for freshmen. In 1989, hardly anyone went to K-State football games, and we were known as Futility U by Sports Illustrated, and generally known as the worst football team in the country. Well, I think we're all happy that Futility U has moved on to Lawrence, Kansas, right? <laughs> In less than 10 years, K-State football went from worst to best in the Big 12 Conference. Bill Snyder led this miracle in Manhattan through the application of 16 principles that anyone can use to achieve success. If you remember anything from this speech, remember success is earned, it's not given to you. The thing that Bill Snyder knew and that Sports Illustrated obviously didn't know is that people who attend K-State are hard workers, they're committed to their future, and the future of their communities. It's really the DNA of K-Staters. Take advantage of every opportunity you get. And I found opportunity in Manhattan at a place called J Riggs West, which I'm sure many of you aren't familiar with since it's closed. But it was a large smoke-filled pool hall that smelled a lot like spilled beer. You might not think this is the best place to learn about leadership, but I honed my pool skills there. Never worked harder in my life than on dollar pitcher Friday afternoons and became a leader there. I worked nights and weekends and within a year I became the assistant manager. I had the keys to the pool hall, counted cash, obviously a good start for a CFO career, opened and closed the business, and was even able to play against some world-class pool players. And every once in a while, made a little extra cash. Sometimes you have to do jobs that others 
don't want to do, but if you use a learning and development mindset, you can make the most of any menial task. You're probably shaking your head by now, wondering what does working at a dive bar have to do with your career? Well, despite my affinity for bars, that was also true, I graduated in 1983 and started my first real job at Pricewaterhouse. I was truly excited to work with clients, to learn new skills, and to begin my accounting career. But my first memory of public accounting was when the senior in charge of the audit told me on a Friday afternoon, you better have the coffee hot and ready at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. Well, I made that coffee. I did more than that. I worked hard, took on additional assignments, was promoted several times, and even volunteered to organize the Christmas party. Now, you might be wondering, why did you volunteer to do that awful job? Nobody gets the corner office by volunteering to organize a party. Well, you can. This is how you get to know people, how you network, demonstrate value in any situation, and learn what makes people tick. So when opportunity knocks for you, answer the door. Did you know there are over 475 organizations, student organizations at K-State? All of these organizations need alumni support. One way you could show your commitment is to be a mentor, to donate, to volunteer. Just step forward and say yes. Service is, to community is part of my DNA, and I also think it's the, in the DNA of all K-Staters. For me, it all started with my father, who spent 20 years in the military. He enlisted for service right out of high school and went straight into World War II. He advanced to become a command sergeant major, and we actually lived in Junction City, Kansas, don't laugh, while he was stationed at Fort Riley. So even at an early age, I was destined to become a K-Stater. My dad taught me everything there was to know about hard work, commitment, leadership, and the responsibility to give back. In his command in August of 1973, I became an Eagle Scout before the age of 13. Now, I don't know if that's even possible today, but when your dad's a command sergeant major, anything is possible. When I went to school at K-State, the football team was not the only thing that was underperforming. While we've always had good faculty in the College of Business, Calvin Hall was old, even back then. There was no student venture capital fund, there was no trading laboratory, a National Strategic Selling Institute, or LED stock, stock ticker displays. But just look at all the new activity and power in the brand new building. Companies come here to recruit you for jobs. Mentors for every student in the College of Business to help them realize their full potential in the business world. The CBA alumni have invested in your future so you can compete in a global marketplace. I read a particularly noteworthy quote from a student who takes classes in the new building. She said, I think what it really shows is how much faith these alumni have in us and how much they're really and truly willing to invest in us. It, it almost makes us students try even harder to not let them down, kind of like a parent. Well, trust me, we're not gonna allow you to let us down. We are committed to your success, and that is why I have invested in your first year in the membership of the K-State Alumni Association. We know that investing in your future is important, and you in turn will also be expected to invest in the future of K-State. 
Don't you find it amazing that Money Magazine recently recognized K-State for many important aspects of campus life? But I thought it was particularly noteworthy to see a 94% job placement rate that just doesn't happen accidentally. We want you to seize on every opportunity. We want you to invest in yourselves and your community, and we want you to invest in the future success of the next group of students that study on Lover's Lane. Now, Dean Gwinner, what can we do about the street name where the new College of Business building is located? Perhaps rename it Wall Street, Park Avenue. I think all of you will acknowledge that this is truly a world-class uh, building to be able to develop future leaders. Graduates, I want to offer my sincere congratulations on your achievements over the last four years, or perhaps it was four and a half years. You don't have to become famous you've already accomplished what only three out of 10 Americans accomplish, and that's to earn a four-year degree. And you made your parents damn proud. So in closing, remember, success is earned, it's not given to you. And if you think college was hard, being on your own, living perhaps in a new city, paying rent, making car payments, and keeping lights on can be infinitely harder. But you are K-Staters, and you are taught to work hard, be committed, be leaders, to give back, and you all will be successful. Now go serve the K-State state community and give back to the next generation of K-Staters. They're counting on all of you. Thank you. Mike, thank you for those powerful remarks and your eloquent challenge to our graduates. If you would come up and please accept a, a small token of our appreciation for your participation in today's ceremony. During today's ceremony, we are grateful to have Amy button Renz, President and CEO of the K-State Alumni Association in attendance. She will say a few words on behalf of the Alumni Association. Thank you, Dean Gwinner. I'm pleased to be part of your special day and offer congratulations on behalf of the K-State Alumni Association representing over 250,000 graduates and friends who will be your lifelong K-State family. Today, as you receive your degree, we are excited, excited to celebrate with you and your family. We are also here to welcome you into a new relationship with your alma mater as you begin this new chapter as a K-State graduate. Our mission at the Alumni Association is to lead and inspire lifelong involvement that will benefit Kansas State University and all members of our Wildcat community. I would like to share three of the core values that guide us in our mission to help keep you connected with K-State. The first value is link. The Alumni Association provides the lifelong link that alumni depend on to remain connected. You can stay in touch through hundreds of alumni activities held on campus, around the country, and even internationally. Another value is tradition. You will all likely celebrate a few traditions this weekend as you sing the alma mater or take KSU photos at your favorite spot on campus. You may also have fond memories of doing the Wabash at a K-State sporting event or rubbing the nose of the bronze Wildcat statue at the Alumni Center for good luck on a test or to ensure a Wildcat victory. As the keepers of tradition, we also hope you will have a chance to visit the Alumni Center to experience all of the wonderful traditions kept there including our newest addition, a stained glass mural designed by 2016 graduate Marcus Gilbert. He played tribute to the beauty of our state and the K-State campus. The third core value is purple. 
For K-Staters, it is more than a color. It's a symbol of pride, connection, and family. When you see someone wearing purple or a K-State class ring or sporting a K-State license plate, you will feel that sense of family. And in recognition of your graduation, as Mike Upchurch, Upchurch shared, he has purchased a membership for you in the Alumni Association. And I think that deserves a big round of applause. We appreciate that very much. We're very fortunate to have Mike as a K-State graduate. And we hope you will enjoy the membership benefits and continue to be an active member after your first year. K-State alumni are among the most loyal in the nation. In fact, our membership ranks in the top five in the nation, and we are number one in the Big 12 Conference. I think that's something to be very proud of. And I think that does deserve an applause. <laughs> that loyalty is shared by generations of K-Staters who have the same passion for K-State that you feel today as you receive your degree from one of the finest universities in the nation. The Alumni Association is also pleased to present you today with an exclusive alumni business card holder. As you go through life and your titles and addresses change, please be sure to keep us updated. We want to make sure you are always connected to your K-State family. Congratulations and go Cats. Thank you, Amy. It is now my honor to present the College of Business Outstanding Graduating Senior in Business Award. This award is selected based on academic excellence and service to the College of Business Administration as an undergraduate. The Outstanding Graduating Senior in Business is chosen by a committee of the Dean's Student Advisory Council, which is comprised of student leaders elected to represent students. This semester, Cooper Clausen has been selected as the Fall 2017 Outstanding Graduating Senior. Cooper, will you please join me at the podium? <laughs> Cooper Clausen will be graduating with a double major in Finance and Agricultural Economics and a Certificate in Integrated Investment Management. Cooper has been an excellent student scholar who is actively involved in the life of the college. Cooper is the son of Dan and Tamara Clausen. He is from Meade, Kansas and a graduate of Meade High School. After graduation, Cooper will start his career as a senior associate at Aqueduct Investment Partners in Chicago, Illinois. Within the College of Business, Cooper has served as a stellar leader. He was president of the Student Finance Association, a project leader and student fellow for the K-State Center for Risk Management Education and Research, a sales team captain for the National Agri-Marketing Association, the chief financial officer for the Collegiate Cattlemen's Club, and a member of the Dean's Student Advisory Council. Cooper embraces the adventure of global learning demonstrated by his taking advantage of three, that's right, three different study abroad experiences one of which he spent in France, where he both studied and had an internship. With multiple displays of involvement, dedication, and excellence in everything he does, I'm proud to present Cooper Clausen as the December 2017 College of Business Outstanding Senior. Congratulations, Cooper. I'm now privileged to introduce today's student speaker, Mr. Patrick Kennedy. Patrick is the son of John and Lucy Kennedy. He's a dual major in finance and human resource management and is minoring in leadership studies. Paola, Kansas is his hometown and he's a graduate of Paola High School. Patrick has been remarkably involved in the college during his undergraduate career. He has served as the president of the Dean's Student Advisory Committee for two and a half years and has served this role with distinction. Patrick has led in the revitalization of the college's annual open house activities and took the lead in attaining funding to support these activities. He represented the college in the Student Governing Association, where he helped to allocate more than $12 million in student monies to the university. In addition, he has received multiple academic awards, including being named a Phillips 66 Shield Scholar, a Coke Discovery Scholar, a Coca-Cola Scholar, and a Bob Dole Civic Leadership Scholar. Patrick has been involved in various roles within the Student Finance Association and his fraternity, Delta Sigma Phi, since 2014, and has operated his, his own business 
Forever Photo Booths since 2012 to help support himself through college. Patrick, it is my honor to welcome you to the podium as the fall 2017 student speaker. Welcome everyone to this wonderful campus most of us have called home for the past four plus years. When I first received the email asking if I would be the one to give this speech for the College of Business, I was truly flattered and I accepted the honor without hesitation. That excitement was short-lived and was quickly replaced with the regret, anxiety, and a little bit of fear. Did I really have enough time to put a speech together and at the same time finish up my coursework, find someone to sublease my apartment, finalize a job, and try to have somewhat of a social life as well? I found myself putting off the preparation of this speech and anything and everything else in my life was taking precedence. Then I got a graduation card from my grandpa. And the first line of what he wrote said, I never got to the point in my life to give speeches. Wow, I think about all of his successes in life and being the one who gave speeches was not one of them. This brought about another reason why being, he why, why being here was so important. My grandpa was of the generation that lived through the Great Depression World War II, the Korean War, and many more. He lived through these economic scenarios we only read about in class. His strong work ethics were instilled in him at a very young age, not because he wanted to buy a new car for himself, but because he wanted to put food on the table for his family. He knew that hard work paid off. He didn't graduate from college, but he went long enough to meet his wife of 63 years and to learn the value of education. Five of their children would end up graduating from K-State. His faith, family, and work ethics would become the foundation of his success. Now, you know I'm not going to stand up here and talk about religion. Um, that's like the number one rule for a peaceful get together is not to talk about religion and politics. And I'm definitely not gonna talk about politics. Um, we could be here for hours. So on to family. My grandparents had 11 children, 29 grandchildren, 49 great grandchildren. Their legacy will live on. Yes, all of us can relate to this concept of family. It is one of the major reasons why many of us chose K-State. There is a sense of family on this campus. And just like our real families, we are all different with our own special qualities and uniqueness. The next piece in the foundation is strong work ethics. I realize this concept is very vague, but I believe it encompasses a wide array of qualities such as discipline, high morals and standards, empathy, teamwork, and effective communication. What we need to be careful of here is to not equate a hard work ethic with always working and never taking time for yourself or your family. My grandparents built a successful dairy business and vital to its success was the attitude in which it operated. All of the children were expected to help on the farm Many life skills and lessons were learned. Teamwork was the only way everything was gonna get done and it had to be done correctly. They also learned at a very young age that hard work pays off. The farm provided the means for every kid to go to college and get a head start in life. My, grand my grandparents also knew the importance of investing wisely. This paid off when they sold out the dairy business and started to travel extensively. My grandpa enjoyed following the market and we would have conversations about a variety of businesses and prospects. We could even discuss religion and politics in small doses. 
My grandpa's favorite thing to talk to me about was my own business. He was excited for me and encouraged me to do my best. We all need to strive to do our best in whatever path we decide to take. Don't sell yourself short and settle for mediocre. You each deserve greatness. The last part of the note that was on the card said, when a guy has the tools he needs, it will be a big help in life. You have the tools, now use them. My graduation card contained the last words my grandpa ever wrote. He died six days later. We each have been given the tools here at K-State. Through our classes, interviews, internships, professional interactions, extracurricular activities, and social activities. Now it is up to each one of us to use them. Our family, friends, acquaintances, professors, role models, and many more make college into what it is. Each and every person that we have met while in college shapes us into who we have become. We have grown, we have changed, and we have now become a part of something much greater than ourselves. Life will throw obstacles and challenges our way, but if we can fight them like we have fought for success, we will be just fine. A large part of life is finding out people who you aspire to be, look up to, or are motivated by. I've gone ahead and highlighted a few individuals that we all know well, and a few individuals that we really know well. So first, an innovative man by the name of Steve Jobs once said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice, and most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Some of you may be inspired by what Steve Jobs did while he was alive. Some of you might just be glad that he invented the iPhone. And some of you might look at Apple's balance sheet and say that they are holding way too much cash. <laughs> no matter what you think about Steve Jobs, he lived his life without regrets. He took risks. He challenged norms. He made change, and he inspired many. On a more serious note, an inspirational woman by the name of Ellen DeGeneres once said, I think everybody should have the same anger towards the injustice that's happening and the hatred that's happening and just fight it with love and compassion. In today's world, we are constantly being bombarded with negativity, hate, and anger. I hope that we can be known as the generation of change and not be known as the generation of millennials. Let's be the generation that fights racism, hate, and injustice with love and compassion. The last woman I wanted to highlight was Oprah Winfrey. Something she once said was, everyone wants to ride with you in the limo, but what you want is someone who will take the bus with you when the limo breaks down. This quote definitely defines what college is for most of us. We have been searching for that one person or few people that will take the bus with us when our limo breaks down. We want to find those who will support us through the bad times and the good times. We all know that life can throw challenges our way. Amongst these challenges, we may want to give up. We may want to get angry at the world. We may question who we are. We may even wonder if there is a greater power. College has shown us that during these times, we learn the most about who we are. I firmly believe that if we aren't being challenged, then we aren't becoming better. I hope that each of us can challenge ourselves in the next step of our lives, challenge who we are, challenge what we believe, and challenge our minds. This is not the end, but the beginning. So if you didn't know any of those people, you've probably been living under a rock and should turn on the TV or open a newspaper. But um, these are three professors that you will definitely know and their famous sayings that you might know as well. So first, Professor Vogt. 
I now know the best way of telling someone to study something is by saying, if you're surprised it is on the test, then I'm surprised it is on the test. Also, I now know that I always need to outwork myself and outwork my neighbor. Second, Professor Hendricks. I now know the best way to get someone's attention is by making a Tinder joke. Um, and I also know that um, all the stories you could possibly know about you, me, and Rodney, because um, that's definitely something Professor Hendricks loved to talk about, was Professor Vogt. Lastly, Professor Higgins. You've taught us all to form an opinion and be able to back up our opinion. I sadly don't have a quote for him, but I rather I have three tips to be successful that I think he'd approve. First, don't be stupid. Second, invest wisely. And third, work hard and make lots of money. I know there are so many more quotes from many professors that I could include in this speech, and I know that each one of you may highlight different people than I did. Even though we have been taught by different people, we all come together as a unified group. We each are different in our own way, but are similar in more ways than we may think. So, as we come together to celebrate our successes and prepare for the next step in life, we need to remember that life isn't about how many friends we make, or how many tests we take, or how much money we have. It's about how many people we've impacted while on this earth. Looking back on my college career, I don't think about the grade I got in Finance 450, or the horrible group I was assigned to. I think about all the experiences that I had while in Student Finance Association, Delta Sigma Phi fraternity, and all of the chat sessions I had with Professor Higgins and all of the late night shenanigans that happen while in college. College is about these experiences and memories. It's about those trips to the varsity truck, going on dates, walking the Kanza, going to football games, having breakfast at the chef, and so much more. Just because we are graduating doesn't mean we forget these experiences. It just means we start over. Whether we are attending grad school or working for a cool company like Amazon, we each are going to experience new things. So as we leave today, I hope we each remember how our K-State family has changed us and shaped us into who we are. Let's be the generation of change. Let's treat others with compassion and love. Mother Teresa once said, I alone cannot change the world but I can cast a stone across the water to make many ripples. I hope we each leave here today and start casting stones so that we too can cause ripples. Congrats to each one of you, and thank you to all who have helped us get to where we are. Go Cats. Don't go anywhere. Thank you, Patrick. We appreciate your enthusiasm and look forward to seeing what the future holds for you and your fellow graduates. Please accept this plaque as an appreciation of our uh, of speaking today. Okay, we are now ready to present the degree candidates for the College of Business Administration. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees from the College of Business Administration please rise and remain standing? <laughs> President Myers, on behalf of the faculty of Kansas State University, I am pleased to present to you the College of Business Administration class of fall 2017. Thank you, Dr. Gwinner. By the authority of the people of Kansas and the Kansas Board of Regents, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I am pleased to confer upon you, the graduating class of fall 2017, the degrees you have earned at Kansas State University. You may now move the tassel to the left side of your mortar board.
Congratulations. Please be seated until the marshals direct you to the uh, podium. Will the marshals please direct the graduates to stand and approach the stage for the awarding of the degrees. Also, will the department heads and representatives please move to the end of the ramp with their respective departments are called. Candidates for a degree in accounting. Eli Camp, summa cum laude. <laughs> Troy Dewey. Brian Douglas Easel. Tevin James Grace, summa cum laude. Rachel Rianne Gum. Jennifer Leanne Hitchman. Anne Shuk Chuang. Logan Francis Horsch, summa cum laude. Sheridan Rose Coster, magna cum laude. Joshua Lindstrom Mullins. Kane Hanley Pacheco. Zachary David Porter. Nicole Irene Reisert, cum laude. Matthew Chase Ryan. Aaron Michael Schmelzi. Garrett William Smith. Tyler James Strecker. Emily Renee Thill. Molly Irene Ward, cum laude. Candidates for a degree in entrepreneurship. Kayla Lynn Blatt. Jonathan Michael Darnell. Brianna Merle Ingle. Alexis Robin Aaron. Hannah Ray Hawley. Mitchell Taryn Holliday. Chase Douglas Lambert. Diana Melina LeBlanc. Brant Michael Loroff. Weston Michael Penn. Alonzo Edward Range. Eric Christopher Rice. Jessica Taylor Schreiner. Matthew William Sullivan. Jason Robert Van Maren. Donald E. Wright. Candidates for a degree in finance. Anthony William Alvarez. Andrew Charles Baxter. Hao Kai. Cooper Jace Clausen, cum laude. Tyler S. Edwards. Brandon Dean Foschultz. Muchen Jen. 
Marcel Adrian Gutierrez Moraz. Garrett Joseph Haney. Cameron Douglas Homolka. Cody Robert Kemmer. Kip Jamison Keeley. Patrick John Kennedy, magna cum laude. Forrest A. Kozen. Wen Liu. Ian Lauren Lloyd. Jack McKee Longan. Jesse Daniel Medina. Michael John Meenan. Quentin J. Miller. Theba Nagaraja. Vincent D. Nguyen. Blake Henry Sanders. Andrew Scott. Shrum, magna cum laude. Nicholas Andrew Scott. Leah Marie Siebert. Maureen Kathleen Stott. Tyler Jason Swartz. Sheng Tong. Blake Ryan Vargo, Bijan Wong, Michaela Christy Yao, Joshua Carl James Zeb, Ming Zhuang Zhang, Thehom Zhum. Candidates for a degree in general business. Monica Renee Kiefer. Candidates for Management, William D. Allen, Audra Rose Anderson, Matthew Daniel Anderson, Michael Aaron Berg, Tyler Brinicky, magna cum laude, Cody James Brown. Alexandra Brooke Deegan. Winston M. Dimmel. Erica Faith Edwards. Brent Oliver Estes. Hayden Thomas Garvey. Pedro Garola, Monique Tanisha Harris, Keneal Antonio Harrison, Luke William Heron, Shay Matthew Lehman. Domingo Macario Lopez II. Matthew Marshall. Benjamin Arthur McCann. Tendai Munyani. 
Audrey Elizabeth Oswald, magna cum laude. Anthony Payne, Maxwell Anthony Payne. Trevor Michael Reed. Bailey Adair Reynolds. Jessica Rogers. Jessica Lynn Ryan. Jessica Shane Ryan. Keith James Schnug. Cindy Michelle Spahalski. Stephen Ray Stymack. Zachary Supple. Kathleen Tan, magna cum laude. Deshaun Allen Trent. Bo Allen Turner. Madeline Rose Wagner. Hao Wong. Sarah Ann Wilton. Logan Michael Wilkins. Hunter Dylan Wingett. Wei Yang Wu. Jing Han Yong. Candidates for Management Information Systems, Alex Avishan. Brett Allen Bruner. Nahom Solomon Daba. Kirsten Ray Guy. Jonathan Terrell Hadley. Brandon Miles Hoffman. Nia Leanne Marshall. Jonathan Paul Poorman. Candidates for marketing. Levi Charles Bailey, cum laude. Haley Ann Barrett. Abdulrahman Assad H. Berry. Wyatt Russell Bayless. Raul Alexis Beltran. Eric Michael Braun. Andrew Michael Bro, Savannah Avery Brush, Austin Charles Butterfield, David Lee Crawford, Laura Marie Crosley, Kayla Ann Kernuth. Courtney Marie Davis. Bryce Davison Thistner. Sage Austin Geller. Victoria Elizabeth Gilmore. Dustin Francis Hermish. Hao Ho. Darren Nicole Ayrton. 
Honor Dawson Jarman. Yao Jun Jia. Brianne Lorraine Lombard. Emily Lauren Lucas. Wiley E. Lundy. Ryan Todd Mance. Anthony McNeely. Chase Michael Middleton. Joel Andrew Milford. Justine May Moore, magna cum laude. Maxwell Chase Oberbrocklin. Callie Marie Pfeffer Hahn. Samuel Michael Preston. Chang Chen. Maria Fernanda Rivero Perez. Kyle Christopher Rohrman. Laura Christine Rook. Aiden Joseph Scheibel. Joan I. Jia Tan, cum laude. Rishen Tong. Yilin Tong. Francisco A. Torres. Haley Aaron Wallstad. Kaylin Christine Watson. Colin Robert Weems. Vance Simon Wentz. Lauren Wilderson. Ryan Scott Woodson. Molly Madeline Young. Graduates, it has been the privilege of the college's administration, faculty, and staff to work with you over the past few years. Let us recognize the outstanding accomplishments of these graduates one more time.
We would ask the audience to remain seated until the platform party and the graduates have exited the Coliseum. You are welcome to meet in the concourse area for pictures and conversation. Graduates, please follow the marshals to the rear of the Coliseum, up the stairs, and into the concourse area. This concludes our ceremony.